southern woman. It is Friday night, about 840, where we live in Georgia. I hope you're having a blessed day. Um, we've had a really good day today. We've been very productive all week, so I'm glad about that. Um, I hope y'all are having a good day, too, and I hope you have a good weekend. Because I will see you Monday with Bible study after today. Today's March the 1st, so I definitely wanted to make sure and get a Bible study in since it's the first day of the month. And um, we are reading out of Hebrew, and um, it's, a, it's a nice um, lesson. It comes from he Hebrew chapter 2 and verse 17, if y'all want to turn to Hebrew chapter 2. Um, it's a beautiful chapter in your Bible, and um, I'm going to read it from uh, this, uh, my KJV right quick. My dog is back here uh, drinking water. Okay, it says, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. This uh, chapter is in Hebrew, and in our Women's Study Bible, it talks about um, how the you know how Christ came here. And how he is above the angels. Um, but he had to come here and be a little below the angels while he was here on the earth. Uh, because he was in human form and God form at the same time. And it's kind of strange when you, you know, think about it. But it's real. And um, so... The sun exalted above angels, it talks about. And then it talks about the sun made lower than the angels. It talks about the sun uh, being the God's supreme revelation in chapter 1. And uh, it's a beautiful couple of chapters in the Bible, I have to say. And it's kind of like poetry. So I am going to... Um, I'm going to tell you what the study Bible says, and then we'll read it, okay? It says, The author stressed that Jesus, as God's Son, had divine nature, the heir of all things. Is a title of dignity showing that Christ has the supreme place in all the universe. Glory and image reveal that the Son is an exact representation of God. When one sees Jesus, he sees God's being and, and essence. By upholding all things, Christ carries creation towards its goal. The Son of God came to deal with the problem of the sins of mankind. He purged or removed those sins, producing a complete cleansing. Sitting at God's right hand indicates that Christ has finished his saving work. Now he is in the place of highest honor. So God sits at the right hand seat of God and he is in his place of high honor. Okay? Now, um, the Bible study, and then we'll go read some of the scripture, says... This is what Charles Stanley has to say about this scripture. Are there days when it seems as if no one understands or respects the unique pressures you face? Is it possible that with your particular family dynamics, burdens, and challenges, few really could? My dog is over there eating, just trunching her soda. She comes in here and she gets her dog food. In her mouth, she's going to eat it now. I don't know if y'all can hear her or not. Yeah. Well, she normally gets a big mouthful and takes it to the living room to eat. But since I'm in here, she's decided that she's going to eat. So, sorry, y'all. At least she's having a feast, right, while we're 
uh, reading about the Lord. It says, um, let me just start over. Are there days when it seems if no one understands or respects the unique pressures that you face? And is it possible that with your particular family dynamics that uh, burdens and challenges few really could? However, there is one who knows and appreciates how you feel, and that, of course, is Jesus, who sees your situation from such a profound perspective that is difficult for the human mind to grasp. Because Jesus is fully God. He has heard the hidden cries of your soul and can influence the dynamics of your circumstances from his omnis, 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 how? Yes, I mean, when I read this to myself, I can say the words, and then when I get on here, I can't say them. From his omniscient and omnip, omnipotent, I'm getting it. Lord of mercy. He has heard the hidden cries of your soul and can influence the dynamics of your circumstances from his omniscient and omnipotent viewpoint. Yet, he is also fully man. So, he also realizes how defeated you get when you are exhausted and emotionally spent. How fearful the unknown can be and how it feels when someone you love betrays or rejects you. So, he ministers to your heart as well. Always remember that Jesus understands you very well and even better than you can comprehend yourself. As fully God and fully man, he can help you overcome any challenge you face. Therefore, trust him and rest in his perfect care. So it's just uh, stemming on the fact that Jesus was a man while he was here as well as God. He had all the feelings that we have. He went through a lot, uh, a lot more than ever some of us will ever dream of. And so it's very easy for him to know how we feel and be able to take those burdens from us if we just give them to him and trust him and look to him for guidance, right? I like the way this sounds. It says the sun is exalt exalted above angels. And this comes out of uh, Hebrews chapter 1. And it says, for to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son. This is saying that God never looked at the angels and said this, but he did about Jesus. It says, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But to the son, he says, your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And... You, Lord, in the beginning, this is the one I love, shows that Jesus was there in the beginning. This is what God says. You, Lord, in the beginning, laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. And they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up. And they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will fail not. But to which of the angels has ever he said, Sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? So our study Bible lets us know 
that this is the comparison of God, well, Christ and the angels. And the whole reasoning behind this is to um, show that, that Christ was larger than the angels. Okay? I'm going to read you this part. It says, The author stressed that Jesus, as God's Son, has a divine nature. Heir of all things is a title of dignity showing that Christ has a supreme place in all the universe. Okay, this is, that was the, the first one I read already. Okay, the author used seven quotes from the Old Testament. It says, to prove his Jewish Christian readers, the Lord have mercy. Chris, I cannot talk tonight. cannot pronounce this word. Anyway, it says, to prove his Jewish Christian readers the superiority, how's that, of Christ to the angels. The Jews highly regarded angels as God's intermediaries in conveying the law to Moses. Let's start over because I sound so goofy. The author used seven quotes from the Old Testament to prove to his Jewish Christian readers the superiority of Christ to the angels. The Jews highly regarded angels as God's intermediaries in conveying the law to Moses. And you can read that in Hebrew too, too. The writer interpreted these Old Testament quotes Christologically or messianic, messianically. That is, he took passages originally referring to God or to Israel's king and apply them to Christ. In contrast to Jesus who sits in a royal state at God's right hand, all angels are no more than ministering spirits or servants. They minister to saved persons. The word spirits preserves their place of dignity, but their function remains of that service. It says the writer warns against drifting away from the superior gospel of Christ and neglecting the great salvation offered by him. With these words, the problem addressed by the author begins to emerge. He was writing to Jewish converts to Christianity who were confronting the temptation to renounce their new faith and return to Judaism. The author called his readers to pay attention, act on the things that we have heard or the whole gospel message. Give the more earnest heed, suggests both, to focus the mind or attention on a thing and to act upon what one perceives inattentively, inattentiveness leads to regression and susceptibility to the temptation to sin. So it's pretty much just letting us know that uh, where his place is and where the angel's place are. So Christ sits at the right hand side of the Lord and the angels are no more than ministering spirits. Now, I did a study and it's been last year on angels. And those of y'all who are part of that study know that angels are true beings that God created, not something that a lot of us think are like a lot of us think that it's our, um, um, ancestors that come back to us and minister to us and that is just not true we're actually uh, completely separate from an angel when we when we die and we go to heaven we don't become angels we are made different than the angels okay now does it mean we can't minister to people no and we may have a ministering spirit but I don't think we would be called angels okay so um, but we do have angels around us, and God made them for that purpose. And they're here to minister to us and help us. Um, I think they, they're like, guard. I know, I really believe that we have like a guardian angel that keeps us uh, safe and that kind of thing. So God is always in control even when bad things happen. If you believe he's in control, you believe he's in control. And if you believe 
that God wouldn't let bad things happen, bad things happen, okay? So, he could send a ministering spirit. He, he could send an angel to keep you from having a wreck going down the road. Or he may allow that to happen. Always, you must believe, though, if you believe that he's God, that he's in control. Um, because even with Job, the devil had to get permission to do what he did to him. Okay? If you belong to God... Then, then he is in control of your life. Um, so remember that, okay? Um, it says, let's see. Um, in the verse 217, which is the one that went with the Bible study, it says, therefore, in all things, he had... To be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Um, so it just tells us that he was here as a man, and so he went through those things. So that he could be a merciful and faithful high priest in all things pertaining to God. So it is amazing to think that the God of the universe would come down and be born of a virgin and live in the form of man to suffer the things that he did on this earth when he could have been in his royal place where he belonged but it was not really where he belonged because it was his father's will that he do this, and he did it. Um, another thing I, I've been thinking of lately is I've always been, I've always believed in prayer. I do. But I also believe, I don't know, I'm just one of these that think that you shouldn't, I don't know, I think you shouldn't pray selfishly. But um, <laughs> lately, you know, once I started, I started reading the Gospels again a few uh, weeks ago, and as much as Christ prayed, Christ, God Himself, prayed to His Father. It must be pretty doggone important for us to pray, and you know, I, I mean, I think, I, I guess. My um, challenge for you would be to read one of the Gospels the next, you know, few days. It doesn't take that long to read the Gospel. And just look at how often Christ prayed. And um, if God himself, through Christ, prayed, I'm sure we're, we're, we should be praying. Because he put these things in this book for an example for us. And so um, we could never pray too much. I, I, I have figured that out. We could never, ever pray too much because he sure prayed a lot. Um, anyway, Marsha Taylor says she has a bad connection. I hope y'all don't. Um, it's so funny because sometimes, usually when there's a bad connection, I can see it on my side. Um, but... I hope y'all didn't, but let's just say our prayers. Uh, y'all can read chapters one and two of Hebrew. If you got a study, if you got a study Bible, read in the bottom of it, and um, it's amazing. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful thing because it really shows you how um, unbelievable God really is, and how Christ. It's really something that we can't fathom. We really can't. It's a spiritual thing. So, um, y'all do that. Chris's mom and daddy's coming tomorrow, so we're going to have a good day with them. And May gets to go um, stay with a friend. It's going to be her birthday, so she's excited about that. And um, we all should have a good day tomorrow. So let's just say our prayers. I hope y'all have a blessed day. I hope y'all enjoyed me and Chris working hard this week with our new schedules. Um, if you haven't heard, I have a new channel, Cake Lessons. 
um, on YouTube. So I need you to subscribe, please. Um, and that would be great, but you will get to see our new uh, videos, one post tomorrow, one post Sunday, one for CBC and one for um, Cake Classics. Um, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this word in Hebrew that shows us that you were there at the time of creation. That you were with the Father and were part of that creation. Not only that, but it shows us that you were higher than the angels. But then you came down to the earth and became a little lower than the angels. And it's just incredibly amazing that you could do such a thing. We, I know with our minds, our just, our just human minds, we can't understand how supreme you really are. We can try to understand it through the Spirit, and but we just thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you for our hope and salvation. We thank you for your sacrifices that you have made for us. May we love you enough to shine your light and tell people about you and um, be with us all as we go throughout the weekend. Help us feel better if we're sick and help us um, smile a little and um, spread some love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Do y'all hear my soda? She's out there barking. Because her mother's not in the living room. If I am not in the living room sitting with her at night, this is what she does. If I go in my bedroom, if I go in the bathroom, if I come in here, she barks because she wants to be put to bed. Because she's ready for her treat. Ever since she was a little bitty, bitty puppy, what she got big enough to jump to the top of the back of the couch, and she was young, as soon as it turned dark outside, she would start barking. Because she was ready to go get in her crate and go to bed. And she hadn't changed. Now, she will sit with us longer in the living room now without barking because she's learned that we're not going to get up and go put her to bed at eight o'clock and especially not at six o'clock in the winter time when it turns dark but she just cannot handle it if i'm not in the living room with her um it's so funny how doggies are come here soda i'll let you tell them goodbye soda come here come here Can you say goodbye? Say, I have to go and bark because my mama's not in the living room where she's supposed to be. This is my soda. She's a Malta Poo. Maltese Poodle Mix. And she's a good dog. She's full, but she's good. Y'all have a blessed night. We'll see you later on Real Southern Woman. Bye. She's a good guard dog. Aren't you, baby? Now, don't get all jealous. She gets jealous, too.